In this video, we're going to talk about cardinality. So cardinality. So two sets, A and B, two sets, A and B, have the same cardinality. So we'll say they have the same cardinality. Well, basically, if they have the same number of elements, right? So cardinality is used to represent um, the number of elements in the set. So uh, the cardinality of a set tells you how many elements you have in your set for all practical purposes. So we're saying two sets A and B have the same cardinality if, so it's defined in terms of a function. So if there exists, a bijection. Some people say one-to-one uh, -one correspondence. Same thing, I just wanted to use the word bijection in this video. So if there exists a bijection f uh, from a to b. So a bijection is a function, um, I don't know why I underlined it, but <laughs> that is one-to-one -one and onto. So keep in mind one-to-one, uh, -one, another word for that is injective, onto, another word for that is surjective. So this means injective and surjective. So if you have a function that's an injection and a surjection, it's also a bijection. If you have a bijection between two sets, you say those two sets have the same cardinality. So two sets have the same number of elements uh, if you can find a bijection between them. That's the idea. So um, A is finite. A couple more definitions, then we'll do some examples. So A is finite if it's either the empty set so if it's the empty set, it has no elements, right? Or A has the same cardinality as a finite set. So it has the same cardinality, and more specifically, as the set from 1 to n for some integer n, so where n is some fixed positive integer. Right, Z plus is the set of positive integers. A set is infinite if it is not finite. So A is infinite. A is infinite. Lots of definitions. A is infinite if it is not finite. If it is not finite. So it's infinite if it is not finite. So there are things called cardinal numbers. So a cardinal number is just a symbol that we assign to a set that uh, indicates the cardinality. So let me write that down. So a cardinal number, cardinal number is a symbol. So it's a symbol we use. It's a made up symbol, someone made up long ago, uh, assigned to a set, assigned to a set that indicates the cardinality. So that indicates the cardinality. Obviously, if it's finite, um, we just use an integer. But if it's not finite, there's other, um, there's other symbols we can use. Uh, the general notation for cardinal numbers uh, is as follows. So there's all kinds of notation. So notation. So I've seen a few. Um, one that I've seen uh, is n with an a. That's, I guess, n for the number of elements of a, so cardinality. Another old school one, pound signed and an A. So, oh, I guess number of elements of A, right? So like on uh, the old phones, uh, you had the little pound sign. A card A, I, I use that one a lot, so I, I will use that one probably. Uh, and then I like this one, looks like it has absolute value bars. So I typically use these uh, when uh, I'm talking about cardinality. Uh, so if A is finite, so if A is finite, then then you know a is equal to n where n is either zero if it's the empty set otherwise it's a positive integer okay um what else what else oh the cardinality of the natural numbers right this is mysterious okay this is a very interesting letter i have a hard time drawing it it looks like this so i'm gonna look something like that oh that's pretty good <laughs> that's pretty good 
looks like that. Um, this is red aleph not, so aleph not. So this symbol is very important. It is assigned uh, as the cardinality uh, for the natural numbers, right? You notice the natural numbers do not have, uh, does not have a uh, finite cardinality, right? There's an infinite number of natural numbers, right? What are they? It's, it's the numbers one, two, they go on forever. So this is uh, an infinite set, right? It's not a finite set, right? It is not a finite uh, set. Um, if you have a set and it has this cardinality, so sets with cardinality, Aleph not are said to be uh, denumerable or countably infinite. I'll use the word countably infinite. That's a more uh, common word. Countably infinite uh, or just countable, right? So um, if you have a set that has this cardinality, uh, Aleph not, you say it's a countable set. Let's go ahead and um, do just like two simple examples. The first one will be just like ridiculously easy. It's so easy, it's just, it doesn't hurt, but it almost. <laughs> One, two, four. So this is a finite set, obviously. So in this case, the cardinality of the set is the number of elements of the set. Well, it only has three elements, so card A is equal to three. Boom, that's it, right? Um, let's do a better example. Let's, let's go ahead and um, prove something. So let, let's let E be the set of all odd integers. So 1, 3, 5, 7, right? All odd integers, okay? You know, E can be written as follows, uh, x such that x equals, well, every odd integer can be written as 2m plus 1 for some n and z, right? So you can write down every odd integer uh, that way, right? Every single odd integer. I could have put a plus here, but uh, I didn't. So we'll allow for zero. That'll give us the number uh, one. Okay, so this is all odd integers. So E is all, all positive odd integers. Okay, all positive odd integers. And um, we're going to prove that um, the cardinality of the natural numbers, so aleph naught, is equal to the cardinality of the set of odd integers. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and prove that. So we have to come up with a bijection uh, between uh, these two sets. So let's do it. So we're going to define, the natural thing to do is define f from the set of natural numbers to e by f of n equals an odd integer, so 2m plus 1. And we just have to show uh, it's one to one and on two, and then we're done. So let me briefly recall over here, I'll do it in red, not part of the proof, what it means for f to be one to one. So f is one to one. If for all n and n, n and m, in the set of natural numbers, whenever f of n is equal to f of m, we have n equals to m. That's what it means for f to be one to one in this problem. So um, whenever you have two elements uh, for every n and m in the domain such that the y values are the same, the x values are also the same. So whenever the outputs are the same, the inputs are also the same. And f is onto, in this case, if for every element in E, so for all m in E, we can find some natural number n in the natural numbers, such that f takes little n and sends it to m. So just really, really briefly recalled uh, the definitions of one to one and onto. Um, let's go ahead and prove that it's one to one. So claim f is one to one. Claim f is one to one. So to show it's one to one, you start by assuming um, that this is true, and then you have to show that this is true. So let's just say suppose f of n uh, is equal to f of m for some n m in the set of natural numbers, right? So that would mean that um, t f of n, well, that's just 2n plus 1. And so that's equal to um, 2m plus 1. Then you can just solve this, right? Subtract 1 
solve for n and m, so you get 2n equals uh, 2m, divide by 2, so you get n equals m. And then, so since n and m were arbitrary, this holds for all at little n and little m, so f is 1 to 1. So just briefly going through it, very easy proof. Let's claim uh, it's onto. So claim f is onto. So to show it's onto, we have to take an element in the codomain, which is e, right? So we have to show that for all m in the codomain, we can find some little n in the domain such that f takes little n and sends it to little m. So take any. Uh, little m in the codomain e and we have to come up with the following so we need f of n equals m so let me come over here we need to figure this out so we need need f of n equals m so we need 2m plus 1 equals m well that's really easy to do because e is the set of odd integers so since m is odd by definition, what does it mean for a number to be odd? That means there exists a natural number n, right? In this case, uh, yeah, natural number n. I'm going to use the natural numbers, not z, such that m is equal to 2n plus 1, right? So m is equal to 2n plus 1. So f of n, right, f of n, well, f of n is equal to 2m plus 1 by definition of f, but we said that's equal to m. So given an m and e, we found an n in n such that f of n is equal to m. That's the definition of onto, so it's onto. So f is 1 to 1 and onto, so f is a bijection. Going really fast, sorry. I'm running out of time. And then that shows that the cardinality is the same. So basically to show that two sets have the same cardinality, all you have to do is produce a bijection, right? You define a function, um, you show it's one-to-one, -one, and you show it's onto. That's it.